It's all about what not to do when you're building a retaining wall in today's video. We're going to cover some of the common pitfalls that plague many small companies when they're constructing a retaining wall. It's not on any one person in particular, but we do want to show you some of the general practices that happen. The drainage aggregate. What you're going to see is this is a P-Rock that they're using. That's the worst kind of material possible when you're building a retaining wall, either for the drainage zone or for the base material. What happens with P-Rock is it rolls. It's a very lightweight aggregate, and when you get a lot of water running through that stone, it can roll and move. What you want is you want a three-quarter clear angular stone because it locks in place. When you put those stones down, they actually clamp in place. That voids any movement when water runs through it, which also keeps hydrostatic pressure from building up. What happens when those P-Rocks start to roll and move is they loosen up the soil behind them. And sometimes what you'll see is you'll actually see silt and sediment coming through the face of the retaining wall but the blocks that they are currently installing to replace those blocks are hollow all the way through. That is the perfect storm of bad building principles. And let's talk about why. They're core filling these blocks with P-Rock and you can see where they're not even able to completely core fill the blocks, but what happens is it inevitably settles a little bit. And you're not supposed to run a vibratory plate compaction or any sort of compaction within three feet of the backside of the retaining wall. So what is occurring here is the rocks are getting laid in loose and then through the first or second rainfall they are settling out. When they settle out it drops the whole pitch behind the retaining wall. That creates a dam. The water can't go over the face of the wall and sail smoothly down it. Instead it's barricaded behind the wall. So you got your retaining wall. It hits behind it and it goes down the back side of the retaining wall. Then gets too much water pressure. It loosens up, silt and sediment come through the face of the wall, the soil settles even further, and it just keeps adding on, keeps adding on, and keeps adding on to the plethora of problems that this, pro this wall already faces. Another thing is in the general design of this wall. You're going to see that they have this divided into a tiered retaining wall system. A lot of times companies do that. A tiered retaining wall creates a surcharge onto the lower retaining wall, which is the absolute most load that you can place onto a wall. For this application, a single tall retaining wall would be optimal. To avoid a surcharge from one wall onto the next wall, what you do, a trick, is you take the height of the bottom wall, in this case it's approximately three feet, multiply it by two, and go that far back with your second tier, or six feet. So from the top of the bottom wall, you would go six feet behind it before you start your next retaining wall. That avoids a surcharge from one wall onto the next wall. It's okay to design a retaining wall to handle a surcharge. A static load is easy to compensate for, but a dynamic load is an entire different thing. I want to show you a retaining wall that we built. What you're going to find is this is a 16 foot tall retaining wall. It's designed to hold up an alleyway behind it, which is no big deal. What we did is we actually used a crane to hold the power pole in place while we were building the wall. We dug out to the alleyway 16 feet down and then we put eight layers of geogrid in, two foot spacing, 14 feet behind the retaining wall. Now that sounds like a lot of numbers, but once you understand geotechnical engineering, it's not that difficult to calculate very quickly how many layers of grid, how far back they have to go, and at what elevation they have to go. But what you cannot compensate for in this case is a dynamic load, which are the trees. The trees on this project don't look like a big deal, but what happens is as the tree grows, you have the weight of the tree increasing, which overall you can compensate for the, the, the maximum allowable weight of that tree, but what you cannot compensate for in a retaining wall design is the root structure of that tree. As the tree grows up, the roots grow down, that's not a big deal, but then they spread out. And what you're gonna find is as those roots spread out, they push on a retaining wall. The biggest no-no you can ever have is when you're looking at a retaining wall like this, you put a tree on top of it. Bushes are fine, but a tree, because of the weight of the tree and then the mass of the roots as they spread out, will inevitably create a wall failure. So don't put a tree on it. Let's recap some of the common pitfalls that you see when you're building a retaining wall. One is the overall design. A lot of times you'll see them splitting a retaining wall into terraces, thinking that they can get away from engineering, when in fact a terraced retaining wall puts more of a surcharge on it than a single retaining wall. 
Second thing you're going to find is they're going to be using P Rock for the base aggregate and for the drainage zone. P Rock rolls and moves. It loosens up the soil behind it, it allows silt to come through it. Overall, it is not the right thing. You always want a three quarter inch angular stone for the backfill zone. You also want to make sure that the grade is, is flush with the back side of the retaining wall and actually a little bit higher to allow the water to flow over the retaining wall, go to the cap zone and flow down the face of the wall and not get dammed up behind it and be forced beside, behind the retaining wall which will cause premature failure. So those are some of the common pitfalls that a lot of companies make. I want you to be aware of them so you can avoid them. You can design your retaining walls to last 20, 30, 50 years. It can be done. There's walls that are out there right now that are older than that. And the walls you guys install, when you use the proper building principles, can easily hit those marks. Go get them.